Welcome to CLC Guru. In this session, we will discuss array and function with example. Already, we have discussed one example that is largest of n number using array and function. Now, in this session, we are going to discuss how to generate Fibonacci number using array and function. So, what is Fibonacci number in the sense? First value will be 0 and second value is 1. So, the remaining values it will generate from these two values only. That is, if we are adding previous two values in the sense, we will get the next value. That is 0 plus 1, we will get 1. Next, 1 plus 1, 2. 1 plus 2, 3. 2 plus 3, 5. 5 plus 3, 8. Likewise, if we are adding previous two numbers in the sense, we will get the next number. If you are entering the n value in the sense, up to that term, it has to generate the Fibonacci number. That is the logic of this program. So, here to generate this Fibonacci number, we have used both the concept of array as well as function. So, here this is the function declaration and in function declaration, we have declared an array with empty size. Here we did not specify the size. Array is an integer data type and n is an integer data type. And the user defined function name is fib. And inside the main function, we have declared array with size 100. And the variables n and i is of integer data type. So, first we have to enter the n value. Suppose n value we have entered here is 5 in the sense. It has to generate 5 terms. Okay. And immediately after getting the n value, we have called the user defined function. This is a function called fib of a comma n and here if you are checking this array a we are not specifying any input within this main function just we have declared the array with its name and we are passing that array to the user defined function okay only n value we are specifying input here so when the function is called in the sense immediately control will be transferred to the user defined function so, already with the previous example itself, we have discussed in function call, it is enough to specify the array name, no need to specify the size. Even empty square bracket is also not required. But in function declaration and the function definition, function header of function definition, it is required to specify the array with the empty square bracket. Here also it is not necessary to specify the array size. That is not must. Okay. So, here this is the user defined function and the complete logic of the program will execute with this user defined function only. And here we have passed the array as a parameter and n as the parameter. And n here we have passed as 5. Okay. Here we have declared i is a variable of integer data type and this i we have used within the for loop. And a of 0th location, we are initializing the first value of Fibonacci number that is 0. And a of first location, we are initializing the second value of the Fibonacci number 1. Because with the help of this first two values only, we can able to generate the remaining numbers. So, the first two terms we have to initialize here. So, these are all the initialization. Okay. So, in A of 0th location, 0 will be initialized. A of first location, 1 will be initialized. And next comes this for loop. Okay. So, the for loop i value is 2. It starts with the value 2 because 0th location and first location already we have initialized the values. And from the second location, we have to generate the Fibonacci term. Okay. So, i equal to 2. So, this will be considered as the first iteration of for loop. Consider i equal to 2. Check the condition 2 less than n. n value is 5. So, 2 less than 5 condition true. Okay. So, it will allow the inner statement to execute only once. Okay. So, a of i. So, i value is 2. So, a of 2 equal to a of 2 minus 1. That is a of 1 plus a of 2 minus 2. So, we will get 0. So, a of 0. Okay. So, a of 2 position is nothing but 
a of one position value plus a of zeroth position value. So this is a of zeroth position value and this is a of first position value. Okay. So a of first position value is one and a zeroth position value is zero. So we will get it as one. So if we are considering the array. Here we have entered n is equal to 5. So the size of the array is totally 5 elements. Starting from a of 0 to a of n minus 1 that is 4. Okay. So this is a of 1 and next is a of 2 and next a of 3. Okay. a of 0th position already we have initialized as 0. a of first position already we have initialized as 1. Now, with this iteration of for loop, we have got a of second location value that is also 1. Okay. Next up, second iteration of for loop. After executing, control will go to for loop again. I will get incremental. Now, i value will be 3. Check the condition whether 3 less than 5. Condition is true. Okay. So, condition true, it will allow this inner statement to execute once. So, here a of i equal to, now i value is 3. So, a of 3 equal to a of 3 minus 1. That is i minus 1, 3 minus 1 in the sense a of 2 plus a of 3 minus 2. That is a of 1. So, in a of 2 position, what is the value? 1. Plus a of 1 position, what is the value? 1. So, we will get it as Okay, so a of 3 position value is 2. Okay, next up, third iteration of for loop, i gets incremental to 4. Okay, check the condition whether 4 less than 5. Condition true. So, for loop will allow this statement to execute once. So, a of 4 is equal to a of 4 minus 1 in the sense a of 3 plus a of 4 minus 2 in the sense a of 2. Okay. So, a of 3 position value is 2 plus a of 2 position value is 1. Okay. So, we will get the value 3. So, now a of 4th position value is 3. Since we have entered n value is 5, totally we have to generate 5 terms. Now, we have generated 5 terms. After execution, Control will goes to for loop again. I gets incremented to 5. Check the condition 5 less than 5. Condition fails. So, control will exit this for loop and goes to return statement. And this return statement returns the control to the called function. Okay. And next, print the Fibonacci numbers are for i equal to 0. When i value is 0, it will print the value in a of 0th location. When i value is 1, it will print the value in a of first location. When i value is 2, it will print a of 2 location value. When i value is 3, it will print a of 3 location value. When i value is 4, it will print a of 4 location value. Then condition fails and the program will terminate. Okay. So, it will print this array in the output screen with the help of this form. So, here if we are considering in the sense for this array, we are not sending any value. Only the array name it will carry to the user defined function. And here it will generate the Fibonacci term and it will store it in the array location. And then after generating the terms, it will return control to the called function. And the complete array elements what is the value it has generated in this user defined function? The complete array elements it will return to the main function with its name. From the function call to the user defined function, we are not sending the array elements. But after generating the Fibonacci term, it will return the complete elements, whatever it has generated. It will return the complete elements to the main function. And only with this one single name. It will print all the array elements in the output screen with the help of the form. Okay. So, here also if you are considering in the sense passing whole array. The complete array elements we are passing with the help of the single array name A. Okay. So, this is an example for passing the whole array to the user defined function. 
So in this session, we have discussed the example Fibonacci number using array and function. And here we have discussed how to pass the whole array. Okay. In the next session also, we will discuss one more example for array and function. Thank you for watching this video. 